The question of how to find your photography style is an elusive one for many people. One that some go crazy trying to figure out. But in all honesty, I think it just comes down to three different things. Worldview, skill set, and action. What I mean by worldview is what do you want your photographs to embody? What themes do you want to explore and show in your work? And what aspects of the human experience are you most drawn to? This could be wanting to showcase just pure aesthetics, imbuing senses of beauty and dignity, giving necessary deserved attention to the world's complexity. Maybe it's social commentary and you wanna make larger statements about the people and environment where you live, or even abstraction. There is great value in expressing feelings that aren't fully rooted in realism. Worldview affects the way you understand and communicate stories. Someone whose worldview and work in general I'm really moved by is Ming Smith. Over the last few decades, she's built up a catalog of incredible photography, but especially street photography, that goes against many of the conventions most people like to believe are mandatory. Many of her pictures have motion blur. Sharpness seems to be low on the totem pole. They're characterized by mystique, like she's photographing spirits rather than people. Looking through her work, I was feeling things I didn't even know were possible from photography. Her photograph of Sun Ra might be my favorite portrait of all time. I bring up Ming Smith A because she's amazing, but B because her worldview is directly in line with how her photos appear. In response to a question in her monograph regarding the blurriness of her photos, she makes a very interesting statement. It's timing and it's not just a blur. There is an art to it. How can I say this? My Invisible Man series deals with light and shadow and darkness. All those elements together, those in-between moments. It's not a post moment, it's freedom. It's what happens between here and there and time. And you're dealing with the time of meaning in that moment. It's like an energy. The energy is there, but you don't necessarily see it. All of that is part of me. Reading that and then seeing her photos or vice versa, there is no shock or surprise. These are the words of someone who deeply understands how they maneuver in the world and within their craft. If you reflect upon a year or two of your own work, I promise you are in it. Maybe you have a lot of photos that focus on shapes and hard light. Maybe there are certain colors you're drawn to. Like no matter where you go, you seem to capture the same palettes. You prioritize environments over subjects. No matter how big or small these things seem, they're a reflection of something about you. Everybody says to study other photographers, which is 100% true. In fact, it's what we just did. But nobody says to study your own work to see what your own catalog is trying to tell you. As your worldview grows and evolves, so do you. And prioritizing new knowledge and experience will take you further than you can imagine. Number two is skill set. As this exploration happens, emphasize developing your core skill set as well, i.e. timing, composition, color theory, reading the streets and anticipating frames. While the most fun part of photography is going out and doing it, without the know-how, you're not gonna get far. Make an effort to understand the more complex aspects of composition and how the decisions you make affect the feeling of an image. Composition isn't everything, but it's one of the few things you truly have control of. How these all come together is the cornerstone of technical skill. Another big part of this is practicing. Going out to photograph solely to get the reps in and test things out. While I have an optimistic mindset towards my work, if I don't come away with a great photo each time I go out, I don't mind anymore. I love photography, but if illustrators can sketch, writers can draft, musicians can jam, we can photograph purely for the sake of photographing. I'm very big on studying painters. I'm fascinated by art history in general. So much of my reading stems from loving to learn about these time periods and seeing how I can look at our world through their eyes. But we remember some of these people for a reason. They were levels beyond excellent. And the visual art fundamentals of painting translate better to photography than you might believe. Let's say we're a bit in the future now. Your skills are developing. You're understanding what you're drawn to. What's next? Well, how do you get it done? How do you approach scenes? Do you know when to hit the shutter? Do you know when to stay still versus move in or out or away? Action is creating the photograph. An element of this is confidence. If you constantly psych yourself out, either your portfolio will be thin, you won't go out in the first place, or you'll always be late on the moment. I'm sure we've all stayed in a scene for a bit and realized that it wasn't the first photo, but maybe the sixth or seventh that ended up being 
the photo, that's action. We've all had a moment come together where we got exactly what we wanted. Then everything fell apart right in front of our eyes, never to happen again. That's action. My photos over the last couple years look and feel different than when I started four years ago. My worldview has evolved. My skill set has grown. I've changed. While style is something that I believe forms, I don't believe that it's a static phenomenon. Some people stress so much about how they can find their photographic style, how they can develop their voice. You can't possibly figure it out until you've spent hundreds, if not thousands of hours photographing. The clearest way I believe to do that is to follow your intuition till its very ends and then reflect and do it again and then reflect and then do it again and then reflect. It unveils itself to you over time. Yeah, you can go out tunnel vision and say, hey, I'm only going to photograph X and Y, but what about everything else that may have caught your attention and been a potential lane for you to grow through? As time progresses, you'll see that your worldview may change. So then your style might as well. And with that, you'll have new skills to sharpen and then the cycle begins again. Photograph everything intuition tells you to, then step back and listen to what your catalog is saying. That, I believe, is the recipe to style. But thank you for watching. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and don't hesitate to say hi on my other social media outlets. My name is Dorian Coleman, and thank you for watching.